Hi, my name is Alex with A Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to add global roles so that you can manage and scale your permissions and access to your Jira projects. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira. All right, so to give you a little bit more context as to what I'm talking about, when you go to any project and you go to the project settings, there's a people section for every company managed project. This doesn't really apply to the team managed because in the access there, you really only get to pick if you're an admin, a member, or read only. So I'm not gonna be covering that. I'm really only talking about within a company managed project in the people section, you can basically add individuals, folks from your team, from your company, so that they can explicitly have access to the project. Now, this is all part of a bigger thing. I am going to be covering permission schemes in future videos. So again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you are subscribed right now because the next couple of videos over the next few weeks are gonna be covering permission schemes in a lot more detail. The very first step in all of this is talking about roles. When I come and add a person here, and I'm just gonna add myself, I have only one role available to myself, which is the administrator. If your objective is to essentially add a few more people and you don't want them to have administrative rights, you need to create new roles. So in this video, I'm gonna actually show you basically how to add more options here so that you don't just have administrators. This is really beneficial for a couple of reasons, but the main one is scalability. You don't want to add folks into a group and then put the group into your permission scheme. You also don't want to sit there for every single person of your team and add them all explicitly because that will take you a day and a half. So the best practice here is to create roles and then within those roles, either put the individual or the group and then that role is then tied back into your permission scheme. And again, we're gonna cover permission schemes in the next video. Make sure you subscribe so we can so you can exp um, understand how that works. Coming back into Jira here, let's actually show you how to add the roles. So we're gonna go ahead and you do need to be a site administrator. You need to have the full admin privilege. If you're not a site admin, you're not gonna be able to do this, but give this video to your Jira administrator. They should know how to do this. It's fairly easy and it's fairly quick. So let's jump into the gear setting here. So we're gonna click on that, and then we're gonna to go to system. Once you're in system, on the left-hand side, you're gonna see project roles and global permission. We're gonna click on project roles. Once here, you'll basically see the administrators, which is what, you're, what you just saw, <laughs> and the Atlassian Annals project access. This is very, very important. This is basically so that any plugin any third party, pretty much the the back end of Atlassian, this allows that to work. So don't ever touch that. And in your permission schemes, this is a, a common mistake that I see people do. In your permission scheme, when you start a completely new permission scheme, this isn't added by default, so you do need to add it back in. Or my best practice, which I'll cover in the next video, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like here, and make sure you come back next week when we talk about permission uh, settings you want to make sure that this is in there, okay? Anyways, for here, we're going to add a couple more roles. And so the roles that we want to add and the roles that I usually promote, right, the roles that I'm evangelizing are the three following. Administrator, so that you can do read, write, and delete. You need to have that because you do not want to give everybody the ability to delete stuff in Jira. And you don't want to give everybody the ability to come in and change the settings. You don't want everybody to be able to administer the project and you don't want just anybody to be able to delete stuff. So those two things should always be reserved to at least your administrators. And these aren't, these don't have to be your uh, site administrators. This could be you rather the project manager as a scrum master. You can be an administrator to the project without being an administrator to all of Jira. So that's kind of where things get a little bit confusing. Um, if you are confused by like the different levels of administration, let me know it well in the comment section and I'll make a video on it if there's interest. So what I'm going to add is a developer. So I like having a developer role for a couple of reasons. 
and and the biggest one being developers are can be abstracted so if maybe you are not running a team that does code but you still use jira developer still appropriate because it essentially just means read and write while administrator was read write and delete developers can only just read and write which is pretty much any user that you actually want interacting with jira but you don't want them to be able to delete stuff and the last rule i usually just call it a user now the user role is just read okay so they can come into the project they'll be able to see the issues they'll be able to see the board they'll be able to see comments things of that nature but they won't be able to actually touch anything they won't be able to create issues they won't be able to edit issues they definitely won't be able to delete anything so those are the three roles that i recommend that you have by default as roles if you've done this now when you go back to your project and i'm just going to go back into any company managed project and you go to your project settings you go back to the people section you'll notice that when i know oh, i went to a different project but when you when you go and add somebody you now have three roles to choose from and i made a little mistake i didn't put a description but essentially you can add descriptions here so that you have a little bit more verbiage as to what role is what but now you have the three roles which weren't present before and this is essentially how you add them. So if you have any questions about what I just covered, please let me know in the comment section below. If you found value out of this super quick video on how to add roles as a Jira administrator, uh, drop a thumbs up. Um, that really, really helps the algorithm. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. It helps me, encourage me to make more videos for you. So please hit that red subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.